mentioning the Park Service's um, high rise video that uh, was put together. I, I think um, it's available online, it's, it's on YouTube and some other places. It's a, it's a wonderful tribute from the Park Service to this whole movement and it reflects its, um, the service's values, I think, through poetry um, and imagery of African Americans you know, in parks and enjoying um, the benefits of life and so forth. Um, and it, it's pretty emotional, so I, I would commend it to people and I'm sure we can get a link and send it out with to the rest of the board um, fairly easily. It's, it's easily accessible. And I, I would also say, you, uh, Kim mentioned Harry Tubman, and I didn't know until recently that she was the matron of the Contraband Hotel at Fort Road Hospital um, uh, in 1865, and that you know that she had a direct connection here. Uh, the Park Service already has two units of uh, historic sites that, that honor Harry Tubman, but she played a significant, uh, made a significant contribution here at Fort Road as well, um, which is exciting. Thank you. Anyone else? I, I just want to make a quick comment um, to what uh, Dr. Elrose Malee said, and that's that, um, and Kim said it so well, but you know, what we did in um, August of 2019 in the work that people like Calvin Pearson and Project 1619 have done to, uh, to make Fort Monroe um, be recognized. And uh, I can't think of, uh, I even think of uh, Jerry Holland, you know, who I always refer to as the person who kept the flame burning uh, when nobody was, was paying attention. And uh, we need to find more ways to recognize, um, especially someone like Jerry Holland, for what, for what she did, because it put us all in a position to where we could welcome people um, last year. I also, and I wrote this to you, I, we, it should not go unstated as the, the, the governor and his administration and the work that they did to um, discuss the Jefferson Davis Arch, how we applied the processes that we have at Fort Monroe, we followed the protocol, we came up with a solution, uh, we, add, we, we, uh, we, we, uh, we modified the sign, we took down what was the arch, we took down what was the most offensive parts of the arch, we added interpretation that had never been there before, we put it in context, all of that allowed Fort Monroe to be, um, to be a more inclusive place. There's a statement, I want to say it's from James Baldwin, that says, I can't, hear, uh, I can't hear what you're saying because I see what you do. And I think Fort Monroe is becoming a place where people trust us because they begin to, they're seeing what we're doing. We need to do more. But they see what we're doing and so people are hearing us. And I think Aaron and Phyllis, who have just been on the front lines of working with the Black Lives Matter movement when they wanted to come to Fort Monroe, um, they stopped everything they were doing and they created a, um, they said, what can we do to help? You know, and then the, the resources from the city of Hampton stepped up and said, what can we do to help? And what I heard in those conversations was, Fort Monroe is a, is a space that is respected. It's a space that's been recognized and it's a space that um, that is a place where healing can take place, and we need to we need to seize this moment and grab this opportunity. One of the things that I had a meeting with the Case Bank Museum staff about uh, yesterday, and have directed them to begin. I think I have the term right: an interpretive assessment. Let's just go through everything in the museum. Let's reread it with fresh eyes, with 2020 eyes, um, with things which we've learned in the dialogic interpretation. Let's make sure we're saying things the best way, the right way, the most historically accurate way. And so all that is taking place. This timing for the National Center for Freedom Grant, while we always discuss you know, what the title of it really should be, but the timing of this just couldn't be better. I mean, we, we now have actually resources brought to us by Huntington Ingalls to allow us to have community conversations and to have lectures. And so regrettably, we're having to do it by Zoom you know, and so forth, as opposed to the face-to-face the -face meetings, but we are remarkably positioned. I mean, you, I'd love to take credit for having <laughs> this whole thing, but we're just remarkable, if not divinely positioned to where we are right now to be a voice in a space for what's taking place. So it's really exciting.
to be a full grown. I can't, I just totally agree with Kim. I'm not worried at all. We'll get through this. We'll figure it out, and it's going to be, we're all going to be better for it. It's going to be a better place when we get done. Absolutely. And I, I would just like to add for those of you who aren't physically in Hampton during these, the, the protests here at Fort Monroe were abundantly peaceful, uh, very respectful. Yep. Um, it, it was very heartwarming to see how people came together to be heard and to express their opinions, but felt safe to do it here and treated the property here respectfully. And they were received respectfully. And that's really what peaceful protest should look like, the way that it happened here at Fort Monroe. So just, just want to acknowledge that. And that, that was um, a lot of the groundwork that had been done, also how everyone came together to honor what, what uh, people felt the need to express and to treat everyone respectfully. So I'm, I'm very proud of how um, this community broadly and Fort Monroe and the National Park Service specifically uh, handled those protests. Yes, Dr. Ellis. Are we going to be talking about the uh, Harriet Tubman uh, piece uh, anymore throughout the day? Or is this the moment? Why don't we bring that up under our uh, uh, board discussion? Okay. That'd so, be a good time for that. Okay. So all I would say is there is a significant perception in the black community and in the entire community, but especially the black community, that uh, sees this place as their place. I think everything that we have done, um, and we've done it consistently, I think assumes to a lot of people that this is their place. And I think that ownership is part of what you see and what you've experienced. Nobody's going to go to their house and mess that up if they see it as a place that is significant to them. And I think there are a lot of people, because of what we have done and what we consistently do, who see this place. As, as, as something that they own and something that they are a part of. And I think that's so important for us to continue uh, uh, because there's a trust there. And I think that trust needs to, needs to manifest itself in all that we do. It ain't no time for us to cut programs and to cut opportunities and to, and, and, and to stop listening to a community that is now engaging with us because losing that engagement will take years to recover. Maintaining it will be much easier and, and a much more pleasant journey. Well said, thank you. thank you. All right, as I understand it, Dr. Ayers will actually be doing the Fort Monroe Foundation uh, progress update today in lieu of Mr. Westfall, is that correct? That's true, but John Reynolds have asked to make a comment before, and I'll, I'll see that to him and then follow right up. 